Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna take a quick trip to Montreal to go visit Salon des Insectes, which is, I guess, a bug or an invert expo happening in Montreal. I'm not really an invert guy, but I figured it would be fun to check it out and I'll bring you guys along with me. So let's go check it out. Daniel, how are you doing? Very good, yourself? Good, good, good. So we're here at Live Beatles Canada. Yes. We always see you at the Reptile and Plant Expo. We never get a chance to speak to you because you are always one of the busiest booths. Um, today I managed to grab you very quickly. Can you, you have a very cool thing in your hand that we've I've already taken a look at, but I, yeah, let's go take a look at this. Can you tell me what's going on here? So this is a grub that's in pre-pupa phase. It's about to transform into a pupa. And this species is Lucanus capriolis also known as the reddish brown stag beetle. And I actually think I can show you. So this is the same species. And as you guys see, they build their pupil cell at the bottom usually. And that gives them a space to safely transform into a pupa and then into an adult. Awesome, is this the same species? This is the same species. And that's what it's gonna look like as an adult. And How long does it take from this stage to this stage to Adult stage. So these are pretty much the same stage once they're in the pupil cell. Awesome. And then from pupa to adult, it's around a month. Awesome. And then you have up to a year for the species as an adult lifespan. So you, that's one of the species you're working with. You have some other really cool beetles to show us as well. Yes. This is a rhinoceros beetle, also a pupa. Very cool. And so as you can see, he's starting to form inside of the pupa and very soon he's gonna burst through in a close. So we're here with Microterrarium Love and we spotted a very cool species that we don't see very often on your table, which is the velvet worm. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I think they're super cool because uh, they are predators, even though they're extremely sensitive. They haven't evolved in a very, very long time, but they're very sensitive to mold and bacteria. Awesome. Um, I purchased a culture from Gil Wizen at the Toronto Expo, you know, the Reptile Expo over there. It's a great show. Um, and yeah, I just have a colony going at home. They're matriarchal, so like lions, they feed their young, they like to pile into a den, and when they're done eating, they will put their food outside for you to clean, which I find amazing. They're really intelligent for little bugs. Yeah, so much behavior out of such a small, I guess, worm. Yeah, yeah this is a juvenile. How big do they get? Um, about the size of across my palm. So four, maybe five inches. Awesome. It's really hard to identify their gender. So we uh, usually buy them in bulk of like six. Sure. And are you breeding them yourself? I have a culture at home, yes. Um, but I'm not fully comfortable with letting go of them yet. I've grown quite attached. <laughs> that is definitely fair. How you doing, man? Very good, brother. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on in this booth? Yes, this is Boutique Trésor du Maghreb. We sell fossils, ammonites, and trilobites, and orthocells. Everything here is from Morocco, ranging 300 to 400 million years old. We have an ammonite over here from the south of Morocco, from the region of As you can see, it has a marble finishing. Some trilobites over here, fossilized 400 million years. We have some geode quartz over here as well, 300 million years old. Fascinating. The showroom piece from What Is As That? Trilobite, perfectly preserved, the 400 million years old brother. So these are actual fossils that these were found in Morocco. Absolutely, absolutely. These are from the south of Morocco and Wars of Zet, where they filmed Game of Thrones as well. Boutique du Trésor du Maghreb on Facebook. Awesome, and I'll put it somewhere on the screen as well. Thank you very Thank much, Thank you, man. brother. Have a good one. All right, so we are just at this booth over here. I'm not sure what it's called, but they're um, giving out mealworm samples, and we're going we're gonna to try them. Are we doing them one by one, or are we just shooting them all? I think we're going to shoot them all. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Very crunchy. Very crunchy. It has no flavor. Mm. It doesn't taste like anything. You know what it tastes like? What? Like a dried cereal. Mm. Have you ever tried mealworms before? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we just tried them. Yeah, they're good? No. <laughs> yes, they are. Not a good meal. I rate this a 9 out of 10. 
I think I might buy a bag. I rate it to one out of 10, I will definitely not be buying a bag. All the eyes applaud. So yeah, we, we spent a lot of money today. Oh, so those are definitely the coolest ones. We got the Magnificus, which we have had a bit of trouble finding. These are real pets. These are yeah. isopods that will get to be Isopod a couple. Isopods of kings. Isopods of kings. And, and, and queens and queens. Uh, so they, they get big and uh, I like the color orange so uh, they were they were a good find. They were a very good find. And cool thing about these ones, um, they actually, I don't know what they're called, the like antennas at the at the back. The stingies. The stingy things. Um, these guys will actually like try to be like, scor like they'll look like scorpions kind of thing to like bite off prey, which I think are really cool. And the they also have like the maternal instinct of like the mom digs the caves and like has babies and takes care of them. So those are really cool. That's so cool. If you've never seen that side, they actually look like scorpions. Yeah, they definitely do. I'll pull up a picture as well. So isopods are the, oh, is that, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so they'll actually. So that's the stingy tail thing yeah, you were talking they'll about. Try to, they'll try to go like this. Very, very cool. Yes. Awesome. Well, and those, those are like the, like the king isopods. Like everybody is like after them in the, in the hobby. So. And you guys got your hands on some. More than enough. We have uh, many bonsai trees here, but in particular, I want to show you this species of plant called Coprosma kirki. This is a species from New Zealand that is very resistant to a broad range of light, humidity, temperature. And as it grows in a terrarium, it only has to be clipped and it will ramify. And eventually it will start looking like a little tree uh, in your terrarium and yeah that is it this booth behind me is called Pandora's or something like that what a cool unique booth so I think you can kind of see it over there they have moths in that little um, what looks like a laundry hamper I don't know but anyway so what they sell their product is um, butterfly or moth cocoons and you can take those cocoons home hatch them at home breed your own moths or your own butterflies anyway I think this is fascinating I think I want to try raising some Luna moths or some other really unique type of moth so I'm gonna go pick up some cocoons. We are currently in line to buy some butterfly cocoons and I don't speak French, so Joel is translating everything for me. So stay tuned to find out what butterflies, or not butterflies, I guess they're moths, what moth species we pick up. Okay guys, so we're here at the ZooMed booth with Honest. Honest, why is ZooMed at an Invert Expo? I mean, you guys are reptile people, that's what we know you as. Why are you here at an Invert Expo? We're here specifically showing our creatures line. So where this comes in handy is this is an ideal setup. You can use this for many different species. I've set this up specifically for a scorpion species. What's cool is you have viewing windows from the side so you can really check out your animals when they're in their humid hides. And this was all created with our excavator clay burning substrate. What's neat about this too is it looks super natural. It's got lots of different uh, caves and crevices. The animal can properly get out of the heat and out of the light, which is very important. And then try to show a few different sizes. This is our habitat kit from Creatures and it's three gallons. And this one basically, again, can be used for scorpions and spiders. And you can incorporate any substrates that you like. And over on this end, we have a little bit more of a tropical theme. This is ideal for keeping isopods as pets. And then again, you can also set this up on a small scale for dart frogs. Obviously uh, it needs a proper drainage layer, but here I've set it up specifically for isopods and we have one munching away at our uh, isopod block there at the moment. Yeah, so I just saw that. So it's feeding on the feeding block, which is this guy right here, right? Yeah, it's this one here. Can Look. you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is a cool new product. Uh, it's an isopod block that's really high in calcium, something that we know isopods need. And this is one of the newest products from ZooMed. So you can put this in. It's a great way to beef up your colony and give them the extra calcium, which they all need. It's also a very clean way to feed them. 
So look out for this product, which will be uh, pretty much available at the pet shops uh, in the area. Awesome. Thank you very much, Honest. And your escapes, as always, are absolutely gorgeous. I appreciate it. So we're here at Salon des Insects. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's the Invert and Bug Show here in Montreal. And we're here with the sponsors, Monarch Reptiles. So you guys have a beautiful table just up at the front. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have going on on your table? So today, we're, uh, we brought mostly all our inverts from the store. And we've been promoting our collaborations with uh, local companies awesome. today. So I can take you for a little tour of our table. Let's today. do that. This here is... La Swamp, which is all bioactive, it's isopods, it's uh, earth, it's leaf litter, it's pods, it's um, <laughs> so we carry all his products in the store. So now, because in store I always have a little bit of like crystals and natural soaps and our tumblers that we make in the store, so we and some some jewelry, we brought that today under the banner Don's Hobby Shop. We have Exoterra right now with all the frog and coke company for um, all our choppable section for dart frogs, crested geckos. So we've been bringing this to show the clients with the monsoon. And then after that, we- And now what we're really here for, the inverts. Yep. The spiders, the bugs. So, okay. We have jumping spiders. We have millipedes, centipedes, um, some tarantulas. We have all the primal fear acrylics. Awesome, I need myself so, one of those primal fear tanks. And then over here we have our zoomeds, all the creatures line for all our inverts with Anis, who's been uh, wonderful in making all displays. We also have Canada Ants Colony with us because we collaborate with them. The famous Zach. Hi there. We've been working with Monarch Reptiles for around a year now. They do amazing stuff. They carry most of our products. Um, so if you are, want anything ants, come down to Monarch Reptiles. Okay, so we're back at home, back in the reptile room. I just want to say what an incredible day, what an awesome show. Thank you to all the vendors that took time to talk to me today and educate me about bugs. I think I'm a bug nerd now. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm super excited about those moths. And also, I noticed I was saying cocoons throughout the video. I believe they're actually called chrysalis. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but these guys. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited about them. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to do a video on hatching them. We're going to do a video on raising them and maybe figuring out if we can breed them. Anyway, yeah, like I said, I think I'm a bug nerd now, um, but subscribe for moth content or subscribe for more bug content. I don't know. We're still Daffy's Reptiles, but we may be doing a little bit more bug content.